If you too are a child of the 80s, maybe even 90s, and then of course earlier, you probably remember going over to your grandparents' house, opening up the fridge and seeing this container, thinking it was butter, gonna get it out to put butter on your toast, and you open it up and there's like leftover chili inside. This was like a thing of our grandparents' era. They were people who believed in waste not, want not, and quite frankly, they knew a lot about living on a little. I mean, I have vivid memories of watching my grandfather hand wash plastic red solo cups and just keep reusing them over and over and over again. I appreciate progress as much as the next person, uh, particularly the washing machine, which quite frankly probably did more to liberate women than anything or anyone else. However, as a Southern gal, somebody who grew up with a lot of tradition, you can appreciate progress and you can move forward um, in the world and in time but also maybe we should temper some of that progress with a good healthy respect for traditions and history. And that's what today's video is all about. I'm gonna share with you guys 25 tips and pieces of advice for cleaning and housekeeping from the past, vintage tips, if you will, tips from grandma. Now, unfortunately, both of my grandmothers have passed away, so I can't reach out to them directly to get some advice and tips any longer. And it makes me sad that I didn't do more of that while they were still here. These are real tips from real grandmothers, and I would love to know in the comments down below if you guys already do these things or if you would maybe be willing to try them if it's something you hadn't heard of. I'd love to know what y'all think of some of these down below in the comments as well. And if you're new here, I don't always dress like this, but I thought it was appropriate for today's video. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of wish that we all still dressed like this because I do love the uh, kind of vintage retro style. It's fun to play dress up sometimes. And this is my channel, so I can do what I want. Tip number one is to always be tidying. Don't save all your household chores for one day. Instead, clean up messes as they happen or keep a bin to toss junk in until you have the time to place it where it belongs. Doing this daily will save you time and a headache. Always be tidying. That is from Elizabeth from Georgia, age 79. This is something that we definitely translate to now. I know a lot of you know cleaning and organization experts and stuff on YouTube who talk about this, who talk about having like a basket at the bottom of your stairs to put stuff so that when you go up, you just take the basket with you. I can remember my own mother saying like, don't walk out of this room empty handed. If you're going from one room to another, you better be putting something back, taking something to where it belongs. Don't be going upstairs, downstairs, or leaving the room empty handed. Number two is to make do with less. I try my best to make do with less. So I snip sponges in half and I never throw away old towels. Instead, I cut them up and use them as dusting or polishing rags. That's Mary from Virginia, age 69. I don't know how many of us these days cut sponges in half. It's not something I see super commonly, but um, I can tell you I grew up with the toxic rag bin is what my mom would call it. And those were like old towels, old washcloths. And those were what we would use for toxic messes like uh, animal messes or human messes. And we all knew growing up that you use those toxic rags for those kind of disgusting messes, not the good rags. And that brings me to today's video sponsor. If I'm telling you about a game, you know it's good because you guys know that I do not normally play like games on my phone. And today's sponsor and the game I wanna tell you about is June's Journey. So if you are into like hidden object mystery games, if you like any of the kind of like true crime genre things, this is a fun version of all of those things combined. It really is such an engaging and fun like detective game. It takes place in the 1920s, so you get that totally like vintage vibe to it. And it's like a murder mystery game. So you're going on kind of like this journey with June and you're helping her to solve her sister's murder. And there's so much more to the game, honestly, than just like the murder mystery aspect of it. You get to like customize, remodel, fix up your mansion and garden island. The imagery, the graphics are absolutely beautiful. The colors are stunning. It's just, it's a very engaging, very fun game to play. It's always nice to reward yourself with a little bit of downtime to do something that you enjoy. And I gotta say, June's Journey game is very fun and something that really combines so many different little elements of things that I love. And I think that y'all will really love it too. So it is free to download. I would highly recommend that you try it. I will have a link down below in the description box as well as a QR code here on the screen. If you just want to be able to take a picture from your phone, if you're watching this on TV or YouTube TV or whatever, you could just take a picture of that QR code and get to the game that way. It's very easy. That brings us to number three, which is to make your own 
cleaning products. I make a window cleaner that's better than anything you'll find in the store. One cup of water, vinegar, rubbing alcohol, and a few drops of lemon oil and glycerine. Your windows will be spotless. That's from Judith from Florida, who is 88 years old. I have not tried this recipe and now I am going to. Uh, I shared with you guys recently in a video some homemade cleaners and some different things that I've done to sort of test out some of these like tried and true grandma's recipe type things. And this is one I haven't tried, but I'm definitely going to. So let me know in the comments if y'all have tried this specific recipe for a homemade glass cleaner because we have so many windows, we go through a ton of glass cleaner a ton. Number four is to use flour sack towels for cleaning. Dorothy from Texas, who is 63, says, I don't use paper towels in my household. I believe it's a waste of money. I buy flour sack towels to do my cleaning. It's worth the investment because they last a very long time. This is so interesting to me because my sister used um, like the flour sack towels as burp rags. I remember her introducing me to those as a different option rather than a burp rag. I was kind of like impressed with how well they worked and there's so much cheaper right everything has a, like the pink tax there's also like a baby tax things that are made for babies specifically those kind of products can tend to get marked up so I, I think this is a great one and one that I've obviously already used in a different variation Number five is vanilla extract is perfect for deodorizing. Before I invite guests over, I boil a small pot of water and I add a few drops of vanilla extract. Sometimes I add orange peels. I leave this on the stove for a few minutes to get my entire house smelling good. Everyone thinks I'm baking all the time. Nope. Shirley from Louisiana, who is 71. Now this, I think we have really carried into this generation because I know that these like stovetop potpourri recipes are very popular. I have tried a number of them. I've kind of created some. And I remember my own mom doing this, especially during the holidays with like cinnamon sticks and cloves and stuff like that. She would put on the stove just to simmer and it does make your whole house smell delicious. The only thing I'll say is that it is a little disappointing uh, when you, think that there's gonna be a bunch of delicious food somewhere and there isn't. Number six is to always dust with a damp cloth. Dusting should be done with a damp cloth. Try adding a few drops of lavender oil for a pleasant scent. To use anything else, in my opinion, would be a waste of time. That is from Linda from Kansas, who's 57. But I like the idea of adding a little bit of like an essential oil to it to make that smell nice. I don't buy dusting products like dusting like cleaners, if that makes sense. So I would pretty much say that I always just use water. So I guess I'm kind of already doing that. Yay, go me. Number seven is lemons are nature's best natural cleaners. I love using lemon to clean. I use lemon juice to get rid of smells and to sanitize my wooden spoons and cutting boards. To polish my stainless steel kitchen sink, I use half a lemon sprinkled with salt. Susie from California, who is 70. Y'all know already that I do love lemons for cleaning. This is a trick that I discovered a few years ago and I have been, again, trying different variations of this. So I discovered a few years ago at our old house using lemons and baking soda and stuff to get that sink really shining and so I also recently shared with you guys in another um, cleaning tips video about using coarse salt and lemons to clean your cutting boards and stuff so I love this one it's one that I definitely think a lot of us still use um, and one that I hope we can continue to pass on to the generations because well quite frankly it's very useful and mostly affordable number eight is to use salt to prevent stains to thunk it. While a stain is still fresh, pour table salt on it. It will help soak up the stain and make it easier to wash out. Darla from Washington, age 64. I have never heard this. This is completely new to me. I've never heard this. I don't know if this is going to be life changing for me or not. We're going to find out because that sounds really good. We're going to test it on something. I'm not sure what yet. Let me know. Do you guys do that? Have you ever heard of that? That is completely new to me. Number nine is coffee grounds will help get rid of bad smells. I use coffee grounds in a small cup or bowl to get rid of bad smells. This works really well for the fridge and bathroom. LMA from Tennessee, age 82. Now I knew coffee beans and coffee helps to clear like your nose because I used to work at the department store. We would always have little jars of coffee beans for people to sniff when they were testing perfumes. It kind of helps to clear your nose in between perfumes um, so that you can sort of attempt to smell them independently. And I just don't know that I ever thought to use them in a room like a bathroom or something to clear out the scent. I will have to see when my husband has his morning constitution next time if that works. I'll let you guys know. Or maybe you can let me know. Maybe you already know if it works. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going to find out. 
Number 10 is to apply wax to your air vents. I hate dusting and try to find ways of doing it, but I found using a little bit of car wax on my air vents in my home will help prevent dust buildup. Gloria from Idaho, age 72. This is so smart. The only problem that I have is that I have so many kids and pets that I think all the pet hair would get stuck in the wax. Maybe I could use like WD-40. I just don't know. I think it would have to be like a very light amount of that. I can just see white dog hair all over the vent. So I don't know. You guys let me know. Have you ever done that? Do you have pets? Am I about to regret that if I try that one? I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Number 11 is to add a few splashes of ammonia to your dishwasher. I learned this trick from my mother, but if you have glass dishes that you want to shine like new, add a few splashes of ammonia to your dishwater. Did I say dishwasher? I meant dishwater. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say she learned this from her mother and she's 90. I don't think they had a dishwasher. This is Lucy from Wisconsin, age 90. Definitely dishwater, not dishwasher. I just think about the fact that Nobody really washes dishes like that anymore to fill up your sink and then keep dirty dishes and then hand wash them and rinse them and put, most people don't do that even if they are gonna hand wash. Um, so I, I'd be interested, have you guys ever tried that? And I wonder if there's a way you could do it with your actual dishwasher. Number 12 is that plain white toothpaste is a wonderful cleaner. Plain white toothpaste is perfect for polishing silver. You can also use it to clean your toilet if you hate chemical smells. Pearl from Vermont, age 59. Now I never would have thunk it to use toothpaste to clean my toilet, but I might just have to try that because again, with kids and pets, I worry sometimes about some of the toxic chemicals in toilet bowl cleaners and stuff. I would love to have one of those like toilet breath mints, you know, <laughs> that's what they look like. But the things that go in the toilet that when you flush it, it keeps the water like blue and it kind of just keeps a low level of cleaner in there all the time. I would love that just for smell and cleanliness sake, but with animals who are prone to drinking out of the toilet from time to time and children who are prone to playing in toilet water, not so much anymore. Our youngest is three, so we don't have so much of that anymore, but I just, for 16 years, haven't been able to use those. So uh, I'm, it's not even something that crosses my mind these days, but I would, I would be very interested to see how the toothpaste works as something that I could use instead of uh, more, a more of a toxic cleaner. Number 13 is a tip about the best way to remove stubborn stains. I've been using these tips for years to get rid of stains on my clothes. For blood stains, soak in cold, salty water. If you have clothes that have mildewed, soak them in cold buttermilk. For ink stains, lemon juice and cream of tartar. That is Jane from South Carolina, age 61. You guys, I think maybe the salt to remove stains is actually gonna work because we're getting this one again for blood stains. And ink stains, lemon juice and cream of tartar. Okay, I'm gonna try them. Have y'all ever tried any of those? I don't think I've ever heard any of those before. So these are brand new. I'm, I love brand new information. It's always exciting. Number 14 is that olive oil can be used for more than just cooking. Use olive oil with a few drops of lemon essential oil to polish your stainless steel kitchen appliances and wooden furniture. I'm gonna try this one because I recently tried, this is Mary from Arizona who is age 78. I recently tried another tip um, and it was to use baby oil for your stainless steel and it did not I, it did not work well. I used the kind of rag they recommended, I used the exact kind of baby oil they recommended and it did, it did not work. And I don't know if it's the type of stainless that I have on my fridge, but it did not work. So I'm gonna try the olive oil one. Number 15 is to clean your toilets overnight. Before bed, I sprinkle borax in my toilet bowl and spray white vinegar over it. In the morning, I flush and that's it. I never have to clean my toilet. Paula from Oregon, age 87. Paula, I love this. I love this so much and I'm gonna try this because at night, that's the one time that I can reliably count on that no children or pets are gonna be messing with the toilets. Number 16 is to use Crisco to lubricate squeaky things. Use a little bit of Crisco to oil your squeaky hinges around your home. It works wonders. Violet from Georgia, age 77. I think that this is much like a WD-40, um, just a hack, you know, Crisco, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. I've never done it, but it makes sense. Number 17 is to clean your walls from top to bottom. I like to work my way from the top of the wall to the bottom when cleaning. This helps avoid streaks on the wall. Anna from Georgia, age 70. Wait a minute, are people cleaning their walls? I only clean the walls if I see fingerprints from like, and now you get my magic eraser out. Are we supposed to be cleaning our walls? Uh-oh. Number 18 is that baking soda is your best friend. Baking soda, baking soda, baking soda. I love it. My favorite cleaning product. I sprinkle baking soda on my carpets before vacuuming to deodorize the room. Margaret from DC, age 85. 
I shared a bunch of recent uh, cleaning hacks and tips that use baking soda. So I know that this one is very popular. I buy my baking soda in bulk. That's how much I use it for cleaning and other things. Long gone are the days where I have just a little tiny thing of baking soda. I have pounds of it. Um, I either get it from Amazon. Um, I'll link it down below for you if you're interested. And also Azure Standard, which is like a place where you can order and then you go pick up. It's a whole thing. That is one of the products that I buy in bulk. Number 19 is all about how to remove those pesky uh, coffee stains out of your ceramic mugs. To get rid of coffee stains in your mugs, pour salt in the bottom of the mug, lemon juice, and add ice. Swish around and all stains should disappear. Mary from Arizona, age 60. I need this one because my husband has a thing where he has like a couple of favorite coffee mugs and he uses that mug like all day and sometimes for multiple days and they definitely get quite, quite a few coffee stains in them. I'm gonna try that one on his coffee mugs. Mine don't usually, that doesn't usually happen. I drink my coffee pretty fast. Number 20 is to steam dishes instead of soaking. What? If you have dishes with hard to remove food on them, soaking it takes too long. Boil a pot of water and steam the dish by holding it over or placing it upside down in the pot for a few seconds. Ethel from Alabama, age 66. This is smart. I did not, I really didn't think about this, but it totally makes sense. So I'm gonna try that next time I've got something stuck. Uh, on a dish because that makes total sense. Although, how long does it take to boil water? I'm not sure if I'm saving time here or not. Number 21 is to remove stains or odors from your hands with tomato juice or salt. You can use tomato juice or sauce, but if you have smells on your hand, say from cutting onions, rub tomato juice or sauce on your hands to get rid of the smell, or you can rub your hand with plain salt. Mabel from Georgia, age 71. Now I wonder if that's because of like the acidity of a tomato, like why does that work? My brain wants to know why these things work. That's a part of the problem for me as I hear this and I'm like, but why? Number 22 is to use shampoo to get rid of grease stains. Use shampoo to get rid of grease stains in your clothes and other fabrics. Alice from Florida, age 79. I didn't think of that. Why shampoo? See, again, I need to know why. Why shampoo? Why not other regular cleaners like a Dawn dish cleaner or something? There's some stains on this chair over here. Maybe I'll give that a whirl. Have y'all ever done that? Have you heard of that? Anybody know why shampoo? Why shampoo? Number 23 is all about how to prevent mildew from growing on your shower curtain. When you get a shower liner, cut off the bottom two inches to prevent it from sticking to the tub. This helps to prevent mildew from growing behind it. Linda from Florida, age 65. Uh, that's a great tip. Number 24 is that the best mattress cleaner is natural sunlight. Every spring and summer, take your mattress outside and let it sit in the sunlight for a few hours to kill mold and mildew. Cindy from California, age 82. I mean, listen, I know that the sunlight is a great disinfectant for so many things. I actually just recently purchased a thing to hang, to make my own like clothesline outside so I can start hanging things. I just need to find a place I could reliably stick my mattress outside that it wouldn't get ruined or hopped on by chickens and then pooped on. So I'm not sure where I would put the mattress to make that work, but again, I used baking soda, let it soak and vacuum it up, which works great, but I can see where, especially once you'd had a mattress for a really long time, this would be a really good idea. Okay, lastly, number 25 is to use a pillowcase to clean your fan blades. When I want to clean my ceiling fan blades I, and not get dust everywhere, I use an old pillowcase. I simply cover the blade with the pillowcase and with a simple swipe, all the dust is contained. Martha from North Carolina, age 69. That is very smart. Uh, I use a sock because I can like slide the dust off, um, but especially, I mean, sometimes you just, you don't see how bad that dust is. And then when you go to take it off, it just goes everywhere. And I am someone who has a very high allergy to dust. So when it does get very dusty, even just moving things around closets and stuff like that, I will just, I start having a sneezing attack. So that's a great one. I'm definitely gonna give that one a try. So hopefully you guys found some of these tips helpful. Like I said, I'd love to know if you're already doing some of these, if any of these are like, whoa, mind blown for you too. And you're like, I've never even heard of that, but I'm going to try it. And don't forget to check out June's Journey down below in the description box. You can download that game and get started playing. It is very fun. I really do enjoy it. That is it for today's video, y'all, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.